This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. How the community can come together to combat child abuse. That story and more next. Hello everyone and thanks for being with us today. I'm Ken Carr with your local information. The man behind the wheel in a hit and run accident in Hazleton that killed a 15 year old will serve no more than two years in jail. 38 year old Gabriel Hernandez Mendez learned his sentence on Tuesday. He pleaded guilty to felony vehicular homicide in March and in exchange charges of fleeing the scene of a crash and failing to stop and render aid were dropped. 15-year-old Hector Padilla was killed after being hit on his bike on June 12th of last year. His family is upset with the length of the sentence. Padilla's father, Pedro Padilla, says in the standard speaker, quote, I'm upset about how poorly my son's life meant to the prosecution here, unquote. Padilla also believes Hernandez Mendez received special treatment because he is the father of one of former U.S. Congressman Lou Barletta's grandchildren. Barletta is currently running for Pennsylvania governor. Luzerne County District Attorney Sam Sangle Dolce says his office had no contact with Barletta and that the additional charges were dropped in exchange for a plea to vehicular homicide as a result of the evidence. After winning a special election earlier this month, Robert Schnee took the oath of office to represent Pennsylvania's 116th Legislative District in Harrisburg on Tuesday. The oath was given to Schnee and two others by the person he's replacing, Tara Tuhill. Tuhill was elected as a Luzerne County judge and had to step down as a state representative. Schnee will serve the remainder of Tuhill's term. Now here's Lisa Sugar with today's news feature. Did you know that one in every four girls or one in every six boys will be sexually assaulted before they turn 18 years old? That is just unimaginable. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Shannon Peduto, who is the executive director of the Luzerne County Child Advocacy Center. The month of April is Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. Shannon, we want to get the word out that this is happening, so hopefully you can stop it from happening. Are your numbers going up each year? Uh, how is How are things going with this? Because you hear so much about it anymore. Yes, so throughout the pandemic, mandated reporters were not seeing children. So our numbers dropped exponentially, almost in half. But we knew that child abuse wasn't going down. We just knew that it wasn't getting reported. So now that pandemic is uh, on its uh, toward the end of the pandemic, where things are opening up, um, we're losing uh, the different mandates. And these mandated reporters are seeing the children. They're around them on a daily basis. The reports are coming in. So you can have anywhere up to 1,200 plus reports of child abuse happening in your community. We saw 500, uh, approximately 500 last year, but just in 2022, between January and March, we've actually received 500 reports of child abuse in three months. So it is going up. People are reporting, thankfully, but these are all the cases that we were not seeing throughout the pandemic. And now these children are able to disclose the abuse and get the help that they need. You just count on the generosity of others to fund this wonderful organization that provides all these services. Tell us about the services that you do provide. So uh, there is a misconception just because our name is Luzerne County Child Advocacy Center that we are a Luzerne County entity. We are not, we are a separate nonprofit agency that provides services to Luzerne County children. So when they come through our doors, nothing is ever at a cost to them. We take on that burden of making sure that everything is paid for for these children and families. So when they come to us, they actually sit with one of our interviewers. It's called a forensic interview. You sit with the interviewer and you have a conversation. And from there, we can learn about the abuse that they have been experiencing many times for years on end. Um, and we can get those disclosures and help them. Then from there, they receive a medical exam. If we need to collect evidence, we are able to do that and hand it over to the authorities to help prosecute the person that did this to these children. We also have uh, child and family advocacy services on staff. So we're making sure that their mental health is okay, that they're going to trauma-focused therapy if needed, making sure that the, the trauma that they've experienced is something that they can move past after this process is over. So this is what they're experiencing when they walk through our doors. If someone who is watching this right now knows of a case of abuse or doesn't know what to do about it, what do they do? How do they report it? 
we recommend calling Childline, uh, which is something throughout the state of Pennsylvania where you can make a report. You can be anonymous or you can give your information um, as a mandated reporter, but please call Childline, let them know what's going on. They initiate a report that goes right to uh, law enforcement and children and youth to report what's going on. You can also call your local law enforcement department. You can call children and youth and also make a report. But if you see something going on, please call someone, please do something. I know a lot of times people are concerned about uh, retaliation if they do speak up, but we've had many children who have lost their lives because no one spoke up. So we don't want that to happen moving forward. We wanna educate people and make sure that they know they can report anonymously, but please just report. Do you find that oftentimes the person who is causing the abuse is known to the child? Yes, I would say that is 95% of the time, if not more. Most times, you know, when I was growing up, it was stranger danger, um, you know, look up for the strangers and, you know, don't go with anybody. But nowadays, when it comes to sexual and physical abuse, it's usually a relation. It's a familial relation. It's somebody in their home that they're living with. Um, whether, again, relation or not, it's somebody within their home. It's someone that they trust. It's someone that they look up to. So when this person is hurting them with their sexual abuse or physical abuse, not only is it the abuse that they're experiencing, but the trust that comes along with it has been broken. And there's intimidation. There's manipulation. So it's also a mental and physical trauma that they're experiencing. Today's news feature is brought to you by Feisner's Ford in Freeland, who is celebrating 75 years in business. Give them a call at 570-636-3920, or you can log on to FeisnersFord.com. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Thursday, partly sunny, then gradually becoming sunny. We'll have a high near 49 degrees and wind gusts as high as 33 miles per hour. Thursday night clear with a low around 29 degrees. Friday sunny with a high near 54 degrees. Friday night clear with a low around 30 degrees. Saturday sunny with a high near 58 degrees. Saturday night mostly clear with a low around 34 degrees. Sunday mostly sunny with a high near 62 degrees. And Sunday night a 40% chance of showers, mostly cloudy with a low around 45 degrees. We'll be right back with our community and sports features. SBTV News, I'd like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these who recently departed. Cora A. Berger, age 91 of Drums, a funeral service will be held on Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Butler Chapel at the Croft News Funeral Home. Friends will be on Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the Funeral Home. Mary Casco of Hazleton, the Fear of Funeral Home, will announce the arrangements. Michael J. German, age 38, of Watertown, Connecticut. Services will be held at the convenience of the family. Jacqueline Marchetti Sacco Gold, formerly of Hazleton. Mass will be held on Saturday at 10 a.m. at Most Precious Blood Church. Friends will be on Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the church. The Fear of Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Thomas M. Lyons, age 69, of Hazleton. Services were held today under the Fear of Funeral Home. Thomas O. McCollum, senior, age 80, of West Hazleton. A funeral service will be on Thursday at 5 p.m. at the Butler Chapel, the Croft News Funeral Home. Friends will be on Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. at the Funeral Home. Marilyn Faith Padone of Ashley. Services will be streamed online. Frank J. Roman, age 87, of Pardeesville. Mass will be on Friday at 10 a.m. at Church of St. Joseph. Friends will be on Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the church. The Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And Rita A. Young, age 89, of Drums. Mass will be held on Friday at 11 a.m. at Good Shepherd Church. Friends will be on Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Croft News Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Tonight's obituaries are being brought to you in part by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory, with two locations in Rockland and in Drums, 570-384-3312 or 570-788-0977. And go to harmonfuneral.com. 